uh, welcome uh, and the introductions of the EC. Uh, I am Gaurav Rajapada. I am the chair of the APNIC Executive Council. Uh, this is my first public meeting as a chair of the APNIC Executive Council because I was only elected the chair after the conclusion of the last meeting in Auckland. Um, I've been on the APNIC EC for a few years now, since 2011. Um, and in my day job, I work for Limelight Networks. Um, we have almost all our EC members here, except for James Spensley, who sent his apologies. But I would uh, do a round of introductions here. So we'll start from the end over there. Kenny. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kenny Huang, Executive Council Member of APNIC. I'm from Taipei. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Jessica Shen from China. <coughs> Hello, Rajesh Charya. I'm the EC Secretary Council, as well as I'm the President of the Internet Service Provider Association of India. Hello, uh, my name is Kem Xiong. I'm uh, one of the EC members. I'm from Hong Kong. Uh, I am R.S. Parhar. I am an EC member from Chandigarh, India. And I am Paul Wilson, the Director General. Thanks. Uh, okay. Um, thanks, uh, my fellow EC members. Um, I will not make my long opening remarks. Uh, we have a pretty tight agenda. Um, one of the things we would, I would like to point out is um, this meeting, uh, we've started doing a slightly compressed format of the APNIC meeting. Uh, that's why we're not spending the whole day on the AMM, and rather starting out in the afternoon. So pretty sure we'll be looking for feedback on how the three-day uh, event uh, model worked uh, for this one. And I think we're going to continue doing this in future. Um, having said that, I will now invite Paul uh, to give the Secretary's report. Thank you. Thank you, Garib, and um, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks very much for being here, uh, APNIC members and friends, uh, our NIR colleagues, uh, RIR colleagues, and uh, others from the internet community around the world. I really appreciate it. Uh, we've got a, a fairly packed um, program uh, this afternoon, and I've got uh, I think a total of 20 minutes to provide a summary of what's been going on at the APNIC uh, Secretariat uh, since the last time we spoke. Uh, I'll be presenting um, data up to date uh, to the end of September and uh, developments roughly since the beginning of the year. And I hope, I hope you find this of interest. Some of it I'll, I'll, I won't labour, I won't go through in, in uh, a great deal of detail, but uh, you'll be able to look at these slides on the website and, um, and of course, ask questions and, and speak uh, to us anytime. Uh, APNIC's vision, a reminder, uh, our vision is for a global, open, stable and secure internet that serves the entire Asia-Pacific community. And we do this through three activity areas on which we report, we serve members, we support the regional internet development and we cooperate with the global internet community. So most of what we do, 50% or more, is uh, serving APNIC members, and that probably corresponds to the number of slides you're about to see. I'll give you a quick overview of what's really been a period of, um, of acceleration, of, of faster growth, uh, that uh, so far isn't, uh, isn't slowing down. We're not sure quite when it will, but um, as you'll see from these charts, we've got more and more activity all the time uh, in almost every dimension. We're now reporting our membership uh, combined with a combination of, of direct APNIC members and the members of NIRs. And by the end of this year, we expect to be serving 13,000 organizations around the Asia Pacific region together with the NIRs. So the split is roughly 50-50, but as, as you can see from the chart, it's continuing to grow. It's around about uh, 1,000 members uh, per month per year, sorry, for APNIC uh, these days. So, so that's uh, much faster than it has been in the past. Other things are uh, speeding up as well. IPv6 uh, took a leap in 2010, as you see here, but then it was fairly flat until we really saw the, the effects of IPv4 exhaustion 
uh, biting and, um, and we're seeing a, a really pretty substantial acceleration here as well. What this graph shows and what the, future, the coming graphs will show is a division according to the sub-region East Asia, Oceania, Southeast Asia, South Asia, and the, um, the last red slice there is a projection of the total to the end of the year. Uh, that's just a numeric projection based on how much uh, activity we've had so far. As you see, IPv6 are accelerating in a very healthy way there. IPv4 delegations, now this is the number of, of delegations, the number of transactions. It's also accelerated dramatically in the last little while, again because of IPv4, IPv4 exhaustion and we're, we're ploughing through the last slash eight and you've, uh, you've heard all about that um, today and during this week. And again, we're expecting to have done more by the end of this year than we have uh, any, in any prior year. IPv4 transfers are on the way up as well. Uh, we have uh, the number of transfers uh, shown here within the APNIC region in blue and between the APNIC and other regions in, uh, in orange and a projection in red as well. And uh, again, I think you saw, you've seen this in detail uh, if you've been, for instance, to the policy SIG uh, this morning where it, was, where it was reported. The total number of IPv4 addresses transferred, that's on a healthy uh, growth curve as well. I think uh, if we add those up, you'll see about 8 million addresses or about, um, about half of the slash 8 being transferred at, uh, at the current rate uh, by the end of this year. ASN assignments, uh, we're no longer really bothering so much with the division of 2-byte and 4-byte because almost all of the delegations that we're doing these days are 4-byte uh, delegations and you can see the uh, same subdivisional breakdown here and the projection and uh, the ASN assignments I think are going in a healthy direction as well. They represent a higher density of network interconnects in, uh, in this region. Uh, and we have traditionally been substantially lower in that uh, density regard uh, than at least the other two large uh, RAR regions, uh, RIPE and, uh, and ARIN. So we're catching up. A Venn diagram here showing our analysis of member resource holdings. So you can see three intersecting circles there of IPv6 and IPv4 and ASNs and the areas represent the sort of combination of those different resources. 73% uh, of our members hold ASNs, 95% hold IPv4, and 49% hold IPv6. And we're seeing a, a steady climb in IPv6 uh, as, um, of course, as APNIC uh, members continue to get ready to, for, for deployment. Uh, I think that's, a, that's on a healthy growth curve at the moment, and we're doing every week, everything we can to make sure that members are well aware of uh, the availability of IPv6 address space. And, uh, the ease of, of obtaining that address space if they express an interest in doing so. Moving on to uh, some of the service activities, something that you've probably seen around for the last year or so is this, uh, this tiger saying uh, ready to roar. And that's about, of course, about the uh, route origina origination authentication uh, authorization campaign. So we're encouraging APNIC members to get up to speed with the whole RPKI system by registering their uh, rowers uh, into the system and uh, putting their address space underneath. Now we only have less than 1% of all address space, all IP4 address space uh, covered by rowers at the moment, um, but that has been increasing slowly and it's going to go on increasing because there will come a time when RPKI will be much more a pressing need for, for everyone here and, uh, and that's, uh, this is our effort to, make, uh, to get us ready as a community. My APNIC is the service portal. Um, APNIC members should know it very well. You should know, I think, about the updates and, uh, and improvements that have ma been made to My APNIC, uh, courtesy of George's member services team and the uh, software development team, mostly at APNIC. Um, things like the bulk who is attribute updates, the reverse DN DNS delegation that now combines in one interface the IPv4 and the IPv6 uh, reverse delegation managements. Uh, corporate contacts and uh, and also the um, we're trying to integrate the RPKI and the rower functionality with route objects which are the traditional RPSL based um, routing uh, mechanism for registering routing information so we're combining those within uh, within my as well to make it all easier I want to demonstrate uh, this uh, this week was a new who is uh, which is called who was uh, it's a new interface to who is let's say into the 
history of who is information, which APNIC has been keeping, of course, in terms of all of the updates that have happened to who is going back uh, as far as 2008 and even before then. We've got a prototype interface that allows you to have a look at any object, any resource, uh, any contact or a record of the database and see how and track how it changed over history. And that's something that you saw in a demonstration this week. It's a, it's a demo uh, test, uh, sort of beta test interface. Very interested in hearing feedback uh, about that. Uh, we plan to go on developing it and to, and to roll it out so that it's, uh, it's available to anyone who's interested in seeing not just what who is uh, looks like today, but what uh, who was. Uh, what uh, the state of the WHOIS database was uh, in prior uh, years, days, months, and years. And a related uh, important and increasingly important activity is to maintain and we hope improve the quality of WHOIS data. There have been a few presentations. APNIC staff are working uh, quite hard these days in the services area to make sure that we can actually make, improve the quality of WHOIS data where, that is, uh, where that's needed so we can respond to complaints or notifications we have about, in, about inaccurate data and make sure the WHOIS database stays uh, as useful as possible to everyone. You would have heard, probably, a proposal in the policy SIG or an informational presentation in the policy SIG, which was from an out outside community, from the law enforcement agency community, asking us to pay some more attention to and place stricter requirements on who is good data quality. That wasn't a proposal, so we haven't been, uh, we haven't actually decided to make changes as a community, but I think uh, this sort of attention is coming, and so APNIC, at APNIC we're trying to stay ahead of the curve by improving data quality, and I hope getting uh, members used to improving data quality uh, now rather than, uh, rather than later. Another new online service is a replacement for our stats.apnic.net website, which is, uh, it used to be a sort of, um, what would you call it, a, a big data analytics kind of package behind there that was very technical and a little bit hard to, hard to know, and we've, we've made that much more friendly now. You can, you can go to stats.apnic.net right now and you can see how you can drill down into the stats about IPv4, IPv6, and ASN usage in the economies of the region and the sub-regions themselves and as a whole across the APNIC region. And we hope that's going to be much more accessible and useful to everyone with an interest. And uh, we hope to also be aggregating more interesting data into that type of interface uh, as, as time goes on. And again, uh, feedback will be very welcome and useful in, in determining how that grows and uh, develops in future. Something else you heard about uh, once every two years, the APNIC survey 2016. We had a record setting uh, 1,175 responses. We had the report from the survey de delivered by Brenda uh, just this week, and the EC and Secretariat are now going to go into the process of analysing that, s that uh, survey report and looking at how specifically we propose, I think the EC uh, and the Secretariat, how we propose to respond to that survey uh, the survey result that we hear and in what order and when and so forth. And that's, that's the normal thing that we do in response to the survey every, every two years when it happens. And so you'll get to hear about that um, in the near future. And the point, uh, an important point here is to thank everyone here uh, in the room, online, in the, in the community who participated in the survey. It's not, it's not a quick process. The survey is fairly serious and fairly comprehensive and uh, really it represents a, a large amount of effort and a very important body of, uh, of information for APNIC for our future planning. Three years ago, APNIC received uh, ISO certification, ISO 9001 quality uh, system certification and under that certification, every three years, we have to go through a full recertification audit so we've, we've passed, uh, very well passed our, um, our annual audits. We passed our three-year audit uh, very respectably, and that's very good to report. We also were at the same time able to upgrade our quality system from the older standard up to 2016 ISO 9001 standard, and um, that's brought some, actually it's, it's an easier standard and it's a more sensible standard for us, in fact, it's sort of streamlined and improved in various ways. 
And so that's good to report. It'll make it easier and uh, more efficient for us to, to maintain those systems into the future. Uh, more specifically, we've got, um, we're using ISO 27001 as a reference for our ISMS, in Information Security Management System. We've conducted internal workshops. We've had an independent security appraisal, external appraisal of, of our system security, and we're working on the results of that. It was pretty good as well. So both in the general quality systems and in the security systems, we're taking that certification and auditing a process uh, seriously these days. So that covers a um, selection of APNIC member uh, member facing activities, the, the services that APNIC has deliver, delivered and developed for members in this period. If you might have missed during this week, for instance, the services session, which was held yesterday, then you can of course catch that online and you'll have seen, uh, if you do that, you'll see uh, more, uh, more detail about the service developments at APNIC. You can see things like the demonstration that was given uh, by Tom Harrison of the uh, Who Was uh, service and the rest. So I'll move on now to supporting regional internet development, the second of the major activity areas that we, on which we report and budget. Training and technical assistance has always been an important area of activity and it tends to become increasingly important. Um, our surveys show increasing demand or at least maintained demand across a growing community for technical uh, training and assistance. This year so far, uh, 39 training courses in 19 locations to 1,208 trainees. This was to the end of September and I guess we've increased the, uh, the numbers even since then. We're using a, a small team of community trainers as well as APNIC staff trainers to deliver courses around the region more efficiently and more directly these days. We're also using uh, e-learning, I'm sure you know, but the stats there are that we've held 90 e-learning sessions, online sessions this year so far with 655 trainees. There are a lot of YouTube videos on our YouTube channel which cover, I think, all of the different training uh, modules and the content that we have and you can find those there. We have an online real-time, real training lab uh, in the APNIC facilities which is accessible and used remotely by trainers to uh, configure routers to learn about routing and, um, and all aspects of, of running uh, that network infrastructure. We have updated it to simulate now or to represent a, a live a multi-homed ISP network with a whole variety of servers including DNS and DNSSEC and so forth. So that's uh, a new development this year. Uh, online, the online APNIC Academy is a new, the new word for the new uh, newly developed e-learning materials and there have been 20 technical assistance uh, presentations and engagements this year. Many of them are externally funded and supported by other, by other funding, I'm, I'm also glad to say. Technical outreach, the survey tells us clearly that um, we are expected and encouraged to work with NOGs and IXs and other community organizations around the region, and we do that. Uh, so far, 10 different NOG and IX events that we've participated in this year, including SANOG and HK NOG and BK NICS uh, APIX meetings as well. Uh, we've given a few keynotes. We're always um, providing technical presentations, updates about services, member gatherings, technical support, uh, sponsorship, and also host master consultation. So that means that as an APNIC member, if you come along to one of these NOG meetings, then you can generally sit down with APNIC hostmasters and talk about what it is that you're, you might be uh, wanting to request or get some assistance with that, that process. Uh, we're also helping the RIPE NCC with their RIPE uh, Atlas project. We've got three new anchors and what, 120 20 plus probes uh, distributed around the region. That's mentioned here because they go out through the NOG meetings, through the NOG uh, communities, and they're, they're found to be very useful facilities for um, the engineers who attend those meetings. Security outreach is a new and growing area for APNIC, and you'll find, again, by reading the survey, that it's gonna be growing more. There's more and more concern and interest in security as time goes on. And so we have Adli Wahid pictured here, who's a member of the FIRST board. He's brought FIRST technical colloquia into NOG meetings and APNIC meetings. There's one that's been going on this week as well. 
uh, LEA conferences. They, these are conferences with the justice sector and the public safety sector where we are trying to make sure that those communities understand the basics of IP addressing, the basics of forensics, the basics of understanding how IP addresses might relate to things like attribution of activities online. And uh, so whether it's the justice sector, whether it's judges and prosecutors, or whether it's uh, law enforcement agents, they all need to know about this stuff. And uh, we feel that it's APNIC's responsibility that they should hear about it from us. They should know the best and the most accurate information as clients of the service that we, that we offer. So uh, finally, uh, something called the GFCE, the Global Forum of Cyber Expertise, which is a public-private, uh, multi-country, multi-corporation, uh, cyber security, that is network security, uh, capacity building training initiative, which we've been participating in uh, as well during this year. IPv6 is still a priority for members. I think everyone's getting used to IPv6 very much these days. The IPv6 deployment curve is continuing to increase. It's looking very healthy overall. It's probably not so healthy if you look at which countries and which ISPs and which communities are deploying IPv6 successfully and which ones are yet to do anything. And we find that there are still plenty of ISPs, members of APNIC who need help and who are after leadership and assistance from APNIC in doing that. So again, training, e-learning, technical presentations, workshops, some of them funded and assisted by people like uh, the U United Nations SCAP, uh, ITU, the ASEAN group, uh, to just continue this process of making sure people are maintaining their awareness and increasing their awareness and priority on, on IPv6 development in the region. We've been asked to do that consistently through APNIC sur uh, surveys for quite a few years now, uh, and we're still asked to do it. Although, as I said, I think security might have jumped over IPv6 as one of the pressing concerns of our community. IPv6 is still definitely there. Uh, APNIC Labs, we're taking um, uh, 7 million measurements a day, uh, recording IPv6 and DNSSEC capability around the world, not just the Asia Pacific region, but we're using that for all sorts of uh, interesting purposes. Uh, Jeff Houston is um, still traveling the world uh, very regularly providing uh, what are really critical updates to uh, various parts of the global community on how, uh, in particular, those particular measures are, uh, are tracking these days. Jeff's a member of the ICANN SSAC, and he's been working with uh, OECD as well as DNS OARC and uh, others in the ICANN community on, um, on some of those uh, research results. APNIC conferences. We, of course, had uh, APRICOT 2016 in New Zealand with uh, 531 attendees from um, around the region. So again, we've, um, we, of course, run, uh, run APRICOT once a year. We're with APRICOT once a year. We're uh, in the standalone meeting uh, once a year and uh, hoping that these meetings continue to be very valuable to the community and to whoever is, um, is joining us. The blog, along with other social media uh, activities, is something that we're uh, seeing uh, really growing very rapidly these days. I think um, the word is spreading about the APNIC blog. You can see the very fast growth curve there that's actually taken a big leap since then, and thanks to Tony and Sienna and uh, Robbie and the team who are, um, who are making and driving that, um, that social uh, network uh, participation and presence by APNIC. Development projects, we're receiving increasing uh, offers of support and requests for APNIC to help with developmental activities uh, that are being offered or run by uh, agencies such as the Japan International Cooperation Agency or ASEAN, as I said, ITU, World Bank. And uh, we have had quite a number of projects which have had financial contributions from them. These are all projects that are definitely of interest to APNIC membership and community, things like IPv6 training. And uh, what, what this has led to is the establishment, which has finally uh, been uh, achieved, the, the establishment of the APNIC Foundation. It's now a registered organization in Hong Kong, and that's going to be our vehicle for clearly partitioning funding for such activities, funded activities, which, which we hope will increase in future from membership funds, which are going to be, continue, of course, to be applied to membership uh, 
oriented activities. And the APNIC Foundation, we hope, will really help us to extend the APNIC development work that's been going on for many years now. ICEF Asia is one of those. Just very briefly, 300 applications for ICEF, uh, the ICEF grants in 2016. Only 10 of those selected, of course, so that's a huge amount of work in distributing uh, what was 450k of funding that came from a number of different sources. Okay, I'll be uh, finishing up shortly with a few words on global cooperation activities. I mean, I've covered uh, many of these, I've touched on many of these things already. These are cooperations outside of our region with organisations inside and outside the internet community, often with other RIRs and with ICANN and ISOC, the so-called ISTARS, but also, as I said, uh, OECD, GFCE, uh, United Nations organisations in a few cases. IANA stewardship transition. Um, I promise not to be talking about this anymore. Uh, so I've broken that promise already, and you're, you're going to hear about it again, I'm afraid, in an NRO update in a few minutes. But uh, I think that I think this is well covered, and, uh, and again, it will be. RAR collaboration. We've had some very nice uh, interactions and collaborations, cooperations with our RAR colleagues. In particular, I'm very proud that APNIC uh, RDAP code for the next generation Who is Access interface was incorporated into the RIPE Who is version 4. So we've deployed that and we'll be deploying the rest of the RIPE uh, Who is version 4 um, code shortly. Um, we've been working with uh, the coordination groups of the RIRs on engineering, communications, financial, human, res human resources, uh, resource services and other activities, those things that we share in common and need, that we need to work together on. Finally, I think we know the next APNIC conference is coming up next year, Ho Chi Minh City, February, late February to early March. And coming later, we also should know about uh, Tai Chung in uh, September next year, about, about Kathmandu in early 2018, and then in uh, New Caledonia, of course, which I think we're all especially looking forward to in uh, September 2018. Stay in touch. Uh, there's simple URLs to get access to all of that social media stuff that I mentioned before. And that's all I've got to report uh, for the time being, but very happy to answer questions, very happy to speak about any of this and more uh, any time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Uh, next, uh, we'll have um, Kenny Huang presenting the Treasury report. Uh, as James uh, could not make it here. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kenny Huang. It's my pleasure to deliver the Treasury report. Basically, the Treasury report was split into two components. The first component is uh, uh, year to date in June 2016 financial report. The second part is year to date June 2016 activity report. So we come to the first part, uh, June 26 year to date financial report. There are some key major at, uh, at the 30th of June 2016. Uh, for example, like, uh, we have strong member growth. Until June 30, we have uh, reached uh, 544 new members to join. And also, the revenue is uh, 173,000 uh, Australian dollars, that's 1.8 percent above budget. Uh, all the dollar I mentioned here will be Australian dollars, so I won't repeat it again. Expense, uh, expense is uh, 69,000, that's 0 0.8 percent below budget. Surplus is 242,000 dollars above budget. So full year forecast the surplus will be 847,000 about a budget. So financial stability major up to 16.84 months of operation, operating expense. So all the key major indicate uh, we are very uh, healthy financial position. So here comes the more detail in the operating surplus. Uh, until uh, year to date, June 30, uh, this year surplus report at 242,000 about a budget. And uh, full year forecast will be 2.247 uh, million 
and that would be 847,000 more than the budget. <coughs> Statement of income, uh, we can see from the revenue. The revenue year today in June was 173 about a budget. Uh, I just say, because we have a very strong membership growth uh, other than anticipate, and also increase in transfer activity. So I will also give some detail later. So full year in 2016 forecast to be uh, 673,000 about the budget. So you can see from the table, the membership growth, actually we have very strong membership growth, especially for in a, in a small and very small tier of member. So we, so far, opening reach. We focus until the end of the, this year, our membership will be up to 5,966, or almost close to 6,000. So we have very strong growth on the membership. So you can see from this chart, that this, let's, uh, let's show the membership, uh, how membership tier uh, distribute. Uh, we have, you can see the yellow color stand for very small, and also the, the orange color stand for very uh, so, uh, yellow stand for very small, and the other one is uh, small. So these two portions occupy the majority of our membership tier. So the next part of the income statement, that's expense. And actually, year to day in June 2016, we have uh, $8.551 uh, $8 million. Mm -hmm. And so the expense is uh, 69000 below our budget. Forecast to be below the budget by 174,000 at the end of 2016. For capital expenditure, capex will be below budget by the end of uh, 2016, about uh, by 300,000, because some of expenditure moved to the operating expense, and we also try to virtualization for some remote site under last, which is under review, and some of the IT system we are considered to move to using the cloud service. So part of the capex, we move to operating expense. Okay, that's the statement of financial position is a balance sheet. Our total asset, including uh, current asset and non-current asset, total asset until uh, June 30 this year is 37,000, uh, $37,058,000. Our total liability is 11, even, uh, almost close to $12 million. The total net asset is 25, close to $25 million. That's APNIC reserve. As I mentioned, uh, we, right, we're now close to more than, uh, close to between 35 and $30 million. Uh, that's our, uh, our current reserve. Not including property, including financial asset, and including cash. So here we try to measure financial stability, and you can see total amounts of co can be covered by our equity. If we are start be, uh, if we start uh, receiving any new revenue, the total amounts covered by the equity will be 16.8284, and it's pretty pretty much close to our target. Our target is 18 months and the target date will be end of next year. And should be, we should be able to fulfill the uh, initial financial position goal by end of next year. Okay, come to the second part of the financial report, treasury report. The second part is the activity report. So Paul already mentioned uh, how we classify our activity into four groups. And the first group is serving member. The second group is regional development and outreach. The third group is global collaboration. The fourth group is uh, corporate expense. So you can see from this diagram, you can see how we, uh, how APNIC uh, uses uh, uh, our, our resource to serve in the member, uh, especially serving the member will occupy a major portion of our, our expense. The second one will be regional development, and uh, next will be corp corporate. The next one will be global corporation. you can see the corporate uh, less expense by activity. The corporate will be 1.7 million, and global corporation will be $17,000. The for regional development will be $1,636,000, and serving member will be $4.3 million. 
the sold total expense was $8,551,000. So year to date until June 2016, the CAPEX by activity, uh, you can see the total cap capital expenditure is $524,000. Uh, uh, would be much, much less than we, and we budget because, as I mentioned, some of the IT system we try to move to the uh, to cloud service, so try to virtualize that kind of system. Okay, that will be end of my treasury report. Any question? Uh, actually, can you let's take questions uh, later? Oh, like sorry. Once. Thank you. Um, hmm, this is going to be, uh, we are also waiting for our NRO uh, election results and I saw the scrutiners come back, but I think we still have 12 minutes, so I'll go ahead and go ahead and do the um, EC report and then we'll do the election results. Uh, this is the re report of our activities uh, for the uh, earlier part of the year. Let's see if it works, okay. Uh, these are our current EC members. Uh, you see all of us up here except for James. Um, the, for those of you who are new to our uh, AMM, um, what we do is basically we represent the interest of the members in the governance of the AP NIC. Uh, we are all elected by uh, the membership um, and serve for a term of two years. Okay, this is okay. Um, and Paul, as Director General, uh, is an ex officio member of the Executive Council. Uh, we provide oversight of uh, EPNIC activities, uh, and then we also look at the broad strategic interest of uh, the EPNIC organization as well as the APNIC community and the regional internet uh, ecosystem. We set the membership fees. Uh, that's one part probably all of you know very well about. And uh, whenever we have uh, policy come up through the PDP, uh, we endorse it for implementation. Um, as uh, the board directors of APNIC, uh, we have fiduciary responsibility to make sure that policies will not harm the community or the organization. Um, so it's very rare for us to send the policies back, uh, but we reserve the right. Uh, the EC meetings, uh, we meet four times a year, uh, usually uh, face to face. Um, this year we had three face to face meetings and one teleconference. Um, we had the joint board meeting with RIPE NCC uh, executive board uh, in May. Um, the next meeting for us for this year is in November in Brisbane. Uh, that's when we'll go through the next year's plan and you know budget and you know uh, activities and uh, approve that. Uh, all of our activities and reports are online uh, at the website. Um, we needed to have one teleconference this year, mainly uh, to decide moving the event from Dhaka to uh, Sri Lanka. Um, otherwise, we kind of not try to do teleconferences uh, without a very specific or fixed agenda. Uh, this is the meeting report. Uh, again, this data is available on our website. Uh, you can go and get look at it anytime you want. So let's go to the core of it. Uh, one of the things uh, the EC has been looking at is the APNIC survey. Uh, we use the survey to kind of set future direction. The surveys are run every two years and we get feedback from the members and get direction from the members and other stakeholders on you know, what activities we should be taking and so on and so forth. Uh, we conducted the survey this year the draft report was submitted to the EC uh, earlier this week, and we actually already released the draft report uh, at this meeting. Um, the survey, we had two parts to the survey. 
the first was uh, focus groups. Uh, the focus groups were conducted around the region by Ann Lord and uh, Brenda Mainland. Um, we also did something uh, new this year. Uh, we ran an online focus group uh, with uh, a focus group in New Zealand uh, as a trial. And from what I've been told, it was a really good success. So we might be looking at doing more of those in future um, because it's not feasible to run focus groups in every country of the region or every economy. Um, so we'll be looking at that more uh, from a process perspective. The online survey was conducted by Survey Matters and Brenda Mainland. We had uh, almost 1,200 respondents. The survey report, as I said, is available on the website. Um, it is quite detailed. Uh, we are still going through it, uh, and we'll make a EC response to the survey available in a couple of weeks from now. Uh, and then, you know, as I said, uh, when we have our uh, extensive planning meeting in uh, November, uh, we'll incorporate the learnings from the survey uh, into the planning for next year. And that process has already been initiated. Um, and again, uh, thank you very much for all of you who participated in the surveys. Uh, I hope some of you got prizes out of it. There was a lucky draw. And you know, if you didn't get the lucky draw, then make sure you participate next time. Uh, because we, the survey is the only real instrument we have to talk to the entire community uh, in APAC, APAC and around the world uh, when it comes to APNIC activities. Uh, we just uh, got the financial report. I don't think I need to add too much to it. Uh, we have seen a really strong uh, membership growth, uh, which has basically brought you know, uh, revenue above the expectation quite a bit. Uh, that basically helps us to get to this, uh, get to the reserve um, target we have. Um, the APNIC EC set a reserve target of having liquid assets for 18 months of operation. And as you saw in the report earlier, we are getting closer and closer. So, you know, basically the reserve, the excess um, uh, beyond target um, revenue or say profit would actually go into our reserve funds so that we can get to the 18 month uh, target faster. And I think once we get that to that point, then we'll probably look at uh, ways of returning the money to the membership or look at that activity. Um, the activity expenditure is in line with budget uh, estimates. Uh, again, this is something we started last year. Uh, we do activity reporting on the budget and it's tracking very well. Uh, we've already started the discussion on activity planning and budget for the next year. Uh, some of it happened this week, earlier this week. Um, the survey plays a big role in it, and we'll uh, get it done uh, in November. Um, in, in, you know, and then present the new budget for, uh, at the mem with the membership um, at the meeting in Ho Chi Minh City. Okay, uh, we said we'll not talk about it, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, obviously, we will talk about it. Um, the INS stewardship transition. Um, in, in the last couple of months, um, as the EC, uh, we made a couple of decisions uh, that supported uh, going forward with the transition. Um, we entered into a service level agreement for the INA numbering services with ICANN. Uh, we entered into an INA Intellectual Property Rights Community Agreement, INA IPR Community Agreement, and we also appointed two uh, members uh, as APNIC representatives to the INA Numbering Services Review Committee. Um, so, you know, as Paul explained earlier, um, we, we had to get everything in place so that when the contract expired on the 1st of October, there were systems in place to take over that responsibility. So all of these agreements are part of that, uh, part of the post, um, you know, uh, US government control uh, situation with INA. Um, part of that was also we needed to nominate two uh, representatives to the Numbering Services Review Committee. Uh, we've decided to nominate the two elected NRONC members uh, to, the, to that position until we, you know, talk about it more uh, the community might decide later that, hey, we probably need separation of this job or, you know, we might want to get more community involved. But at this point, uh, rather than appointing someone out of our hats, uh, we, we would just designate 
the two uh, members, the elected members, uh, to this committee. And then we can review it again next year. So their terms have been specified as uh, the whole of next year, starting on 1st of January, expiring on 31st December. Uh, we'll also nominate a non-voting member uh, that has been designated by the Director General, um, most likely our services director, because uh, he would be the one working with INA and measuring their SLAs. Uh, we talked about this at the last uh, uh, members meeting. Um, in 2012, the EC had resolved to put a moratorium on adding new NIRs um, or accepting new NIR applications. Uh, we've done a, quite a bit of work on it. Uh, we engaged KPMG uh, to do an NIR framework analysis. Um, we had a questions related with NIR and regional or localized services to our members in the survey. And based on that, we'll be doing some more follow-up on this. And we hope to present a much uh, better idea or a much better you know, position paper on this uh, at the next meeting. Engagement with ICANN. Uh, our engagement with ICANN is based on, uh, well, the ASO is our main vehicle for engagement with ICANN. Uh, it's based on an MOU. Uh, the ASO Address Council uh, nominates uh, two directors to the ICANN Board of Directors. Um, seat number nine and seat number 10. Um, I don't know how they number that, but you know. <laughs> um, we, we met uh, with both of the current uh, uh, board members and board member elect uh, Akinori Maimura uh, during this meeting. Um, we hope that that will continue to strengthen our relationship with the ICANN and you know, because the ASO nominated uh, board members uh, not only represent the numbers community, or well, not only represent our community, but the entire numbers community. And they are our big voice uh, within ICANN. Uh, so they are all here. Um, Paul gave a brief update about APNIC Foundation. It has been incorporated in Hong Kong last week. Uh, We're working through the processes, um, you know, making it a charitable organization and working on the uh, operational practices around the uh, foundation. Uh, you should, uh, you can keep on following the website um, of APNIC Foundation. It's linked from the APNIC website um, as we progress towards this. Uh, we don't think it will actually, um, you know, we, we are not so sure of the timeline of how long it takes to stabilize this, but we'll be starting to doing more and more activities under the foundation now that it's been uh, incorporated. Uh, member feedback. Uh, a few years ago, we had a request from the membership that uh, they wanted a mechanism to talk to the EC or provide feedback. Um, so we have a section in My APNIC that allows you to make submissions uh, via My APNIC. Uh, it's very easy online submit form. You can just, uh, to submit those uh, feedback, you need to log in through My APNIC and you can submit the feedback. Uh, Last year, I think we received three uh, feedbacks. This year, so far, we've received one, uh, which was a feedback about the fellowship uh, program uh, for APNIC, and we've taken the appropriate action around it. Um, so yeah, we welcome comments, suggestions, and questions from members, stakeholders, all others. Uh, you know, the My APNIC uh, web form is accessible to members. But any of you, if you feel like uh, you need to reach out to the executive committee, then you can either find us at these meetings, uh, APNIC meetings. We also frequently attend many NOGs uh, in the region. Um, APNIC staff attend a lot of uh, NOGs and you know, trainings. Uh, you can always find us there. Or if you're having uh, failed that, uh, you can always email us at uh, execsec at apnic.net. At this point, I will actually pause the open mic. I'm supposed to do open mic right now, but we'll do the election results first, and then we'll uh, do the open mic immediately after that, uh, you know, when you can ask questions about the three presentations just now. So I'll let the election chair take over.
good afternoon. And Ishan Vishal Sa with me. So I'm happy to say that there is there's no uh, disputes reported to me or any of the uh, election committee members. So at this moment, I would like to call on one of the scrutineers uh, to make a comment on the vote count process uh, before I announce the uh, election results. Hello, um, good afternoon. My name is Sandra Chima. Uh, as one of the scrutineers, I confirmed that there were no irregularities during the counting of the ballots. Thank you. So, envelope is sealed. I'm just going to open it. So here's what you expect. Here's the results. Uh, total valid paper ballots, 127. Total invalid paper ballots, zero. Total paper ballots counted, 127. Uh, total on-site votes, 127. Total online votes, 86. Total votes counted, 213. Uh, now I'm going to announce the total vote count for each and every nominee. Bajesh, Bajesh Jain, 124. Henry Kasipi, 67. Komal Batul, Batul 22. The total votes counted is 230. The nominee who is successfully elected into the NRO number council is Pradesh Jain. Congratulations, Pradesh. I will now hand over the results to the APNIC Executive Council Chair, Gurab Upad. Yeah. Thank you, so, Rohana. To all the nominees, uh, thank you very much uh, for, your, for running, to helping me to run the election. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Rohana. Uh, con congratulations to Brajesh Jain uh, as being elected the new NRNC member, and also thanks to Henry and all the guys who participated in the process. Thank you very much to all of you who participated. Uh, also, thank you to Rohana. Uh, as a appreciation of the time and effort on this, is a small gift. Paul, you want to give that to him? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thanks. Thanks for helping. <laughs> what happens with this time? Uh, Give it to, give it to uh, the election case. Okay. Okay. Connie. Connie? Yeah. Okay, uh, we'll resume the open mic now. Uh, for the three presentations we had earlier. Um, any, any questions on the secretary report or the EC report or the treasurer's report? Yeah, Ajay Kumar from Irin. I would like to understand what was the requirement for creating new organization based on the Hong Kong. Ah, okay, you are asking about the Epini Foundation. Okay, I'll address that. Any other questions? Uh, Jain, this is regarding to consider the ethnic fees which is 
NIRs pay 190 percent of the standard calculation, as well as there is a transfer fees of, I think, 20 percent. So I would request to easy to consider if they can reduce this on both amounts. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. Uh, thanks. I think the, uh, the fees uh, questions are easy, as I said earlier. Uh, we'll be reviewing the fees on a dynamic basis uh, going forward. Um, and this year we have a good, uh, you know, surplus. So we'll look at that. And, uh, you know, you'll get our uh, feedback uh, end of the year. Um, coming back to Ajay's uh, question about the foundation, um, we looked at it quite a bit. And as uh, Paul said, uh, we get a lot of uh, requests for help, as well as we get a lot of uh, people willing to contribute uh, to the funding or to the training or to whatever we are trying to do. Um, we discuss quite a bit about this, and one of the things is uh, APNIC, the charter, is very bound uh, about what we do. And there is also um, our ongoing um, you know, relationship with the Australian tax authorities, which allow us to maintain our um, tax-free status in Australia as a membership-based organization. Uh, when we start receiving large amounts of money and spending it uh, for the good of the internet, um, that does create a bit of a, you know, conflict in the core APNIC functions and, you know, the activities we undertake. So that was one of the reasons why we decided to incorporate it in Hong Kong. Uh, we did do extensive search of different jurisdictions uh, where it will be the most uh, useful and most uh, appropriate to set it up, and we ended up in Hong Kong. So it is more of keeping APNIC, the organization itself, true to its core function and objectives, and you know, diverting a lot of the development work to the foundation uh, so that we don't diverse away from our core objectives. Uh, thank you. I think we'll go forward to the next one. Um, I'll invite uh, our policy six chair. Must. Masato Yamanisi or Sumon. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'd like to give a brief update about the policy session. We have a three session. Can I get the slide here? So we have three policy sessions, one yesterday, and today we have two sessions. So, right. So yesterday, actually, we had uh, discussed on the who is data accuracy, and uh, we have got a speaker from a local law enforcement agency, and also got three remote speakers, two from BI and one from New Zealand. Uh, and uh, they actually expressed their concern, and uh, they expected a accurate who is data. But in fact, uh, in the community, we have, we have been discussing from the last meeting, actually, at 42, we have discussion on who is data accuracy, and the discussion continuing. and. Uh, uh, we, all the member agrees that we need to have more accurate data, and uh, the law enforcement, they probably want to have this conversation in each region and expecting a global coordination, and they may, might come up with a policy proposal next meeting. And uh, in the, today is in the first session that uh, we have uh, In the second policy session today, uh, that one? sorry, I just mixing a slide. Okay, we can go from here. That in the second session, actually, we have uh, inner race selection in the first. Then we have three presentation from uh, on inner number resource status report. Then report on final IPv6 uh, IPv, uh, slash 
I think we four final slides for delegation. Again, still there is a mistake in the slide. <laughs> Sorry about that. And uh, also the IPv4 transport report. Uh, report, report. And uh, in the third session, actually, we had two proposals. One policy proposal from Tomohiro Fujisaki to prohibit to transfer IPv4 address in the final slash eight block. We have a line of discussion there, and we have got uh, some uh, concern and support for that to have some policy that uh, can uh, prohibit transfer that really not into the purpose of some other intention. But there are also very strong concern that uh, let's leave it at least and we can uh, see what happens next. But eventually that uh, uh, the, uh, we came to a consensus that uh, we'll uh, ask the speaker to come up with a further proposal, uh, upgraded proposal with uh, the feedbacks received from the audience and uh, the author to that. And the third proposal was actually on, uh, it's, it's a joint, it's a joint uh, meeting with cooperation, NIR, and policy SIG, and it's about, uh, uh, it has basically two parts. It's proposed by the Masato Yemenishi, the policy SIG chair. It's proposal for revi revi revising eligible voter of chair election and chair terms. And uh, it's basically two parts. And uh, we have got a different kind of opinion on two part. I didn't discuss with Masato, but uh, it was decided that uh, it will return to author and for further consideration. And uh, as some people have considered that, yes, we need to uh, discuss further on uh, the terms and uh, the election procedure of the chair and co-chair election. And uh, uh, it's also returning to author for further consideration. I didn't discuss with Masato, but uh, I'd like to propose if we can divide it into two part, actually, two different proposal one for the eligibility of voter, another for the uh, co-chair co and co-chair terms. Uh, I don't know you might consider that. So uh, that was the discussion in the policy meeting, in three meetings. At the end, i just like to announce, the, share good news, actually, we have the result this morning, that uh, uh, for Bangladesh, we have our dot Bangla IDN is active from this morning, though it's not yet commercially launched. <laughs> But you can check the first domain we have website is available, bidinog.bangla. If you can type it Bangla, you can type it in the browser, you can see that. And hopefully it will very soon it will become commercial. Thank you very much. Thank you, Simone. Um, next, uh, I'd like to request the uh, newly elected chair of the NIR SIG, Sam, to, uh, to the NIR SIG update. Thanks. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Sham Nair. Uh, I'm uh, presenting here the report of NIR SIG. So we did a session on 3rd of October. On the second half, around 82 participants were there. The main agenda was uh, updates and, of course, election for the chair and co-chair. Then uh, updates from uh, scenic all, all the NIRs was there. Then there is actually an announcement from the Adam for SIG chair election procedure review. So, Toshio Tachibana, chair of NIR SIG, resigned due to professional reasons. So, accordingly, Ajay stepped up as acting chair before election could be held. Election for chair was held for the first time of the agenda of, uh, at the NIR SIG. Sham Nair from SIFI Technologies India was elected. Our community thanks to Toshio Tachibana for his service and acknowledges Ajay's effort to be as uh, acting chair. So these are the presentations, updates given by all the NIR. All NIR were present that day. Question answer session, there are two uh, dis, uh, points were discussed. Uh, one issue of 190% premium was raised and requested the chair to bring it
of 20% transfer fee on IPv4 addresses was raised. And again, the same issue was requested by community to be brought into the notice of EC. So these are the two questions. Uh, these suggestions came on that day. So this is email ID of chair as well as co-chair. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. We have a question. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Akinori Maimura, Jay Pinnick. And then, uh, first of all, congratulations for your assumption of the NRC chair. Uh, I, I'd like to have the, the last slide displayed in the uh, screen. Last slide. The last slide. And that, the, the, no? so that, um, uh, And I say, yes, a Q&A part. you said the suggestions, you said? Q&A and suggestions. Yeah, part. OK. Yes. Start. All right, that's OK. Issue of 190% premium was raised and requested to bring it to the notice of APNIC EC to consider for the reduction. Who will raise to the EC on this issue? This was, this was uh, raised it, by the community member to be informed, to inform to the EC members. Who? During so, the update. So is it, is, it, is it the consensus of the NRC? Sorry? Is it the consensus of the NIR SIG? This was uh, discussed during the NIR SIG and there was no opposing for this and uh, we have taken note of that. Taken note. And uh, you reported to the uh, Yeah, absolutely. The as, as the floor has requested us to report to the EC and we have reported accordingly. Yeah, so um, yeah, that's, that's actually makes sense but I'm a bit unclear that, you know, how the APNIC EC will take it, take it into their discussion or consideration. So, uh, but uh, you know, that, that makes sense, you know. You can, you can raise in the report. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and anything, anything raised from the CIG session to the MM, MM. In that term, that makes sense. But I'm not really clear the meaning of this. Hey, thank okay. you, Akinori Thanks. San. Izumi, you have something to add or? Yes, I, uh, Izumi Akutani, I'm speaking as an individual, so, um, you know, I, I, I didn't expect Akinori to speak, so, no, really uh, speaking as someone who was at the NIRSIC. So, yeah, I'm also not clear about what the position of this um, comment to the EC is. I did remember there was one comment from the floor which mentioned this, but, um, you know, there were no further discussions and there was no, like, uh, support, like uh, explicit support, and it, I don't think there was like a, any facilitation or further discussions about this point from others, other than some one person who made a comment. So I think it's a fair observation to make, to, you know, mention an update to the EC. There was one person um, from the floor who made this comment, that's correct. But um, I just want to make sure it wasn't presented as some, something like a, a consensus from and I ask our participants, and if it happens to be a proposal to the EC or suggestion to the EC, I don't think you know there was any like process followed to make a suggestion. So I just want to you know clarify what this was meant as well. Yeah, thanks, Izumi. Actually, that's, uh, the two comments came, and it was very clearly mentioned during the meeting uh, that it should be informed actually, to the EC. Uh, so accordingly, we have informed. Thank you for the discussion. I think we, we, we can go and review the transcript of the yep. session to mm -hmm. do that. So thank Thanks. you, Sam. Uh, thank you, Izumi. Thank you. Uh, now we have a uh, few minutes left uh, in this session, so I'm going to add uh, something that is not uh, scripted. Uh, because this is also a very important thing. So I'm going to ask, uh, you know, as I talked earlier uh, when I gave my update, uh, the EC update uh, about our representation 
the numbers community representation to the ICANN board, the seat number nine and 10. So Ron Da Silva, one of our community representatives have volunteered to show how that nine and 10 happens. Uh, so Ron, um, and he'll give us a quick update on our Excellent, thank you, Garb. And we get music too, perfect. Uh, I'm glad to be here, Rhonda Silva from the ICANN board. And uh, as Garb said, I'm one of the two ASO uh, representatives on the ICANN board. And this is actually part of an outreach that the board is doing at um, all the RI meetings, trying to make sure that we increase engagement with uh, the, the numbers community. And a reciprocal agreement we've been doing with the NROEC is also having the RIR um, community represented in the plenaries at our ICANN meetings now. So this is very intentional and um, glad to have a small piece of the agenda to share a little bit about what's happening uh, from the board with uh, the perspective of the RIR community. But first, I thought I'd have to say something about the transition. And this is all I wanted to say, because I thought the IETF had the best tweet on this topic. Let's move on, business as usual. Now, the NRO Number Council, which you just uh, went through the process of selecting another representative to, is comprised um, from 15 members, three from each of the uh, RIRs. I have them listed here. Uh, the important thing here, of course, is from the APNIC region, you have AJ Tomohiro and Aftab. Oh, wait, it's been changed. And I gotta go back. Oh, this isn't the updated one. Okay, I was trying to be clever. I actually had the update with. Uh, uh, okay, I forgot your name. Help me. Rajesh. Yeah, Rajesh. So, um, congratulations, and I uh, look forward to working with you. And uh, this slide is now out of date. But nevertheless, a couple of important things that the NRO does in the ICANN, and one is the coordination of uh, global policies amongst um, the five RIRs, and the other is the appointment of these two board members. So the board structure, uh, often, I think, in the number community, we don't, we don't get an appreciation for what are all these other people on the board. And this big colorful picture here shows uh, a very diverse uh, board of 20 members, the orange board members on the top there, one through eight, corresponding to the uh, box down on the left-hand side here, are uh, selected by a nominating committee. The nominating committee comprised of various representatives across the um, ASO, uh, the um, GNSO, the CCNSO, all the different constituents have members that are on the nominating committee and select eight of the members of the board. The next two, the, the two strangely numbered nine and 10 that Grubb was referring to are the two from the ASO. I'm number nine and uh, Quo is number 10. Uh, Akinori will be assuming number 10 here soon. soon. So we're yellow. And then um, you see the other uh, registries and uh, the, this, the country code, the GNSO, these are all adding another seven members to, to the board that are elected. These are all uh, representatives from different constituencies. So that makes 15. Yorn, our CEO, makes number 16, and then there are, um, uh, sorry, that's 15 plus Yorn makes 16, and then there are four, uh, four more that are uh, liaisons from different groups. So there's um, a representative from the IETF, there's a representative from the Government Advisory Committee, and then also from the, the Root Server Advisory Committee, and also the uh, security group. So e each of those builds up to 20 members, and? That's me. Um, this is, I'm coming up on 14 days will be one year anniversary for me. And uh, uh, Quo um, is just finishing up 35 days, I think, uh, hit the, his second term. So he's spent six years uh, serving on behalf of the community, uh, has been very active and very vocal representing needs and um, I think uh, issues that are important to us and uh, has been a strong advocate. So I just wanted to point that out. And Akinori, we're, we're, we're glad to have. And uh, I, I'm sure in this community in particular, it's great to have somebody else from this region uh, in this very important role. Now, one last thing I wanted to do um, with a couple minutes is talk about Quo. 
35 days left, but six years of impact. And, and this is a great catalog of a few of the major things that Quo was a part of over the last six years. One, um, there was a huge uh, conflict with respect to the .XXX domain. Uh, Quo was a part of helping making sure that got resolved and moved forward. He was instrumental in the new GTLD process, which generated an additional, you know, more than 1,500 um, new strings. He was part of Rod's departure. He's very proud of that. Um, he initiated this effort to really get uh, ICANN board and RIR interactions. So ICANN and RIR are certainly looking to continue that and to, and to lead that going forward. But he and uh, Ray Polzak, who, who I, I replaced a year ago, um, initiated that a, a number of years ago. So we're living on with that legacy. Thank you. And he was part of hiring Fadi some five years ago. And then hiring Yoren just uh, earlier this year. Uh, we've gone through V4 depletion, um, V6 day, if you remember that a few years back. <coughs> Excuse me. And general uh, IPv6 uh, uh, adoption. And then very recently he was, you know, he was here as we finished up the ICANN transition. So I just want to ask everybody to join me as I ask Quo to stand and uh, express some appreciation for his service. say something about it. Uh, first of all, thank you for the number community to put me into the ICANN board in the year 2010s. Actually, my turn is more than six years. It's six months, six years and six months. Because I can adjust the board turn in the 20, 2013. So I guess six months more. Uh, second of all, I think is uh, also thanks the uh, number community to put me into the second term. And I'm very happy to have Ram to come in to take the, you know, the uh, role. Who's that? You take the position of the uh, brother, Mr. Brother. And also happy to see we have a new ICANN board, also from Asia Pacific region. It's Akin only, you know, my Muna. I think that is a very good news for AP regions. And just like Ram said, in this uh, six, and, six year and uh, six months, there's uh, many things happens. And you know, like a triple X, like a new GTLD, and I have a chance to select to I can CEO and also looking for the INA transition. I thought about INA transition will be done after my turn. I'm very happy it happened in my turn. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Ron, and also thank you, Quo, uh, for your really long service on the, first on the APNIC Executive Council, and then on the ICANN board as a representative of the numbering community. And your list of achievements earlier, you know, you know I, I think Akinori would have a hard source to full, fulfill. So good luck to Akinori as well. Uh, on uh, being, uh, and congratulations on being uh, uh, nominated to the ICANN board. Thank you very much, uh, Akino Maimura, JP Nick, and then uh, I am, uh, this is my st strange feeling to uh, participating in, uh, to participate in uh, AMM to looking at the stage. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was look, uh, looking at uh, looking at the floor from the stage, uh, from uh, the, uh, you know the, until the, the last meeting, and then afterward my my next challenge is the, to uh, to uh, assume the I can board seat ten, seat nine, 
uh, after the, 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 the great, the board member, Koei and I, I, cannot, I cannot, you know, feel uh, enough uh, the, his, his, his shoes, uh, you know, my, my foot uh, in, in, into his shoes, but uh, I will do my best and then I will keep uh, participating in APNIC meeting to uh, talk with you and then, uh, uh, then bring your, your voice to the ICANN board. Then I'm happy to work with uh, Ron Da Silva, the, the fantastic guy, and then I'm really, you know, empowered with him and with you, the community. Thank you very much. Um, I was thinking of making a joke about the numbers, but I think uh, we'll break for tea. Uh, and for those of you who drink coffee, coffee, uh, and we'll uh, come back here at 4 o'clock.